Is your Google merchant account suspended? Has Google sent you an email stating that your account's no longer live? This video, I'm gonna tell you why it probably got suspended and how to get it resolved. Let's get started. Four subjects to look into when it comes to Google Merchant Center. Number one, it's the merchant account itself. That's all the data that you have to fill in when it comes to tax, shipping, business info, tax info, and so on. So now I'm gonna show you what it takes to fill in all the information. Make sure that your shipping and returns is all filled in. It's gonna ask you for a shipping service. Go ahead and let them know. Also the returns, you wanna enter a return policy. So for the United States, you wanna go through, let them know what the link is on the returns and uh, tell them yes or no if you do accept it, but make sure you have that link. Uh, next thing that's gonna go to that I'm not, but you have to do it is the return window, the return method, product condition, and fees. So make sure you fix all those six steps. Next thing that's really important is the sales tax. Make sure that you mention what state it is and you have to specify your own if uh, you're using the sales tax option. Uh, next thing is the business information. So your display name, your basically your trademark is your business name the address you have to do a phone verification so Google's gonna send you a prompt you're gonna have some customer service info so how do people contact customer service for the website itself you do have to verify it so you can verify it through Google Analytics Google search console or they're gonna give you a snippet to add to the header to your website because it's not like Facebook you can only have one merchant account that's active per Google so one domain one merchant account you can't have one domain and two merchant accounts last but not least is the setup of the shopping ads so make sure that you add the business details verify and claim the website set up the shipping set up the sales tax add the products link to Google Ads obviously you would have to add because you need to advertise these add billing details and create a campaign once you've done all this you should be clear on this side now there are a few other things that you could do um, to make sure that you're filled in I mean look at these other options uh, including API's preferences region so go ahead and fill these in I mean they don't hurt so make sure that you can fill as much as you can I mean going back on our end we see that uh, there's a few things that we need to take care of on our end like billing details and we need to create a campaign Part two is the website. The website can be pretty complicated because Google's really picky on what the website has to have. First is policies. So when it comes to your website, you need to have terms and conditions, shipping policies, the refund policy. These tend to go in debt. So let's talk about first the shipping policy. If you're selling a product, you're going to be obviously shipping to a customer. You want to be as specific as possible, telling the customer when they're going to expect a package, what should they do if the package doesn't arrive on time, what should they do if they receive the wrong merchandise. Go as specific as possible on every page. Don't be afraid to just write pages and pages of content. Google hates it when you don't tell the customer what's going to happen in certain situations. Second, the product page itself. You're going to need what's what we call the headline, the H1, what the product is, bullet points summarizing the product on a short description. Most platforms like Shopify and WooCommerce have a section below the title that allows you to give you a brief description. Google doesn't like it when you copy and paste information, for example, like AliExpress products that you might find online on thousands of websites. Google doesn't like it when you copy something and replicate it on your website because it honestly looks like spam. Google is really sending traffic to websites that they trust. So make sure that your content is all there and it's unique. At the same time, it's trustworthy because if it's not trustworthy, it might raise a flag with Google 
and the account might just get suspended. Google also wants you to have each page accessible throughout your website. So this means having the pages such as shipping, terms and conditions, privacy policy, the contact details on the footer of your website. So make sure when you build your website, you have those pages accessible throughout your website and the best way to do so is to have it on the footer of your website. Let's go into contact. If a customer wants to contact you, Google likes it when you have your email, when you have your phone number, when you have your address listed clearly on the website. And the best way to get that resolved is to have it on the footer as well as a contact page. Make it transparent and make it easily accessible. So make sure that your footer has those pages. We'll put the pages that we recommend in the description of this video. If you're missing one of those pages, make sure to add it because Google can suspend you at any time. It's one of their policies and it's always been there. Sometimes customers that call us may be missing one or two or on one of the pages, they might not be going in depth on what each page is about. Also, one thing that's sometimes, sometimes missed is the email. So if you're gonna be publicizing your email, use an email that's at your domain. So if your domain for us, for example, it's 405 ads, make sure you have something like admin at 405ads.com. Google doesn't like it when you use a generic email like Yahoo, Gmail, and it doesn't give that trust factor. Google tends to be really picky about this because they tend to suspend websites that have a lot of claims. For example, one that stands out is like the supplement industry. So the supplement industry makes a lot of claims about weight loss, about a lot of health benefits. Google doesn't like that. If you're gonna be putting something on your website, make sure it's backed up by some sort of evidence or make sure that you have disclaimers throughout your website that let users know, and Google of course, that these claims are subject to so-and-so. Google doesn't like it when websites use all sorts of claims that are salesy, pushy, or just really not true. So make sure that if you're using claims, they're backed up by something, that they have some sort of disclaimer that goes with it. The feed. So the feed is actually what's feeding Google what the products are on your website. So make sure your feed is according to Google's policy. We'll put a description in this video on what the feed is and how it works and what a template of a feed looks like. So make sure that your feed is consistently updated, especially if it's a manual feed. You wanna make sure what the feed has with Google matches the products on the website. For example, the prices might change, you have to update Google. Something as simple as that can trigger a Google suspension. So make sure your feed's up to date and again, look in the description of this video because we tell you how to do it. The last thing that Google just doesn't allow on the platform is businesses that meet their prohibited categorized list. The first one is counterfeit goods. So if you have counterfeit goods, pretty obvious, you can't market them. They're not gonna be allowed on the platform. The second one is dangerous products. So if your products are dangerous, Google will allow you to advertise. When I think of dangerous, I think of like ammunition, guns, things of that nature. They're just not allowed on the platform. The third one is dishonest material. So what is dishonest material? You're selling information that's for cheating or you're selling documentation that's fake. Last but not least is inappropriate content. So content that spreads hate, content that spreads misinformation, Things like this are misleading and Google doesn't allow it because it's just not allowed on the platform. Google may allow you to actually come out of that category if uh, you're not actually part of that category. So it may be a little bit confusing at first, but we've seen examples of like supplement products get categorized as chemicals and drugs, so we may be able to help you there. If you have any questions, we do offer unsuspending accounts as a service here at 4 or 5 Ads. So reach out to us, let us know in the comment section if this video was helpful, if or there's anything else that maybe you did that helped your business get unsuspended. I can talk about this all day.